folks at shellthingsindustry.com, well, here's a great tip that Dr. Big Daddy passed along to me. And it's got to do with uh, deeming that this tooth needs a, an indirect restoration. So you're going to place a crown on this tooth. Now, if you remove this amalgam and you're going to place another amalgam restoration, you have to, well, take it out and then place some sort of band, whether it be a Toffelmeyer Automatrix or any other type out there. Pack the amalgam restoration and then let it set for approximately 24 hours. And we all know that as these restorations get larger, they become more and more difficult. This can also be, so you're going to be place, replacing this restoration with another foundation restoration out of amalgam. So here's a simple technique, whether you're, it's a vital tooth or endodontically treated and you're using the pulse, pulp chamber uh, for retention in that core. What we're going to do is we're going to fabricate a provisional restoration, hollow it out, and then pack our rest, prep our, prepare our tooth as it is with this old restoration and then replace the foundation restoration. And you'll see as it plays out. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to fabricate a stent, a putty, whether it be putty or a triple tray uh, with some polyvinyl siloxane, whatever it may be, we're going to, we want to fabricate a provisional restoration using this tooth already, just like you would for any other crown. But you want to make sure that your the occlusion is correct and also you can see here we're missing uh, a piece of this restoration. So we're going to take some flow and build this up so we have the proper anatomic, anatomical contours. So I'm going to go grab some flow and then place that in there. Okay, so now you can see I've added some flow I mean, you can use whatever material you want, even wax will work uh, in this situation. And I'm building it up to the anatomy that I want my provisional to uh, look like and also for the appropriate uh, occlusion. So at this point, I'm going to fabricate a stent. And there are many different ways of fabricating a stent. You can use just a putty. Uh, I mean, you could take a, an impression, an algae impression, and either pour up a set of models with that. I mean, that would kind of, um, you're sort of backtracking against doing it doing this uh, little build-up uh, intraorally. Or most commonly, or not most commonly, but another way is using a triple tray. So I said putty intraorally or some sort of, there's been thousands of different products. And there's some lit to suggest that, and it's very controversial, sort of controversial about the flexibility. Now you can see the flexibility in the, uh, the plastic dual arch impression tray versus the flexible, the very almost fairly rigid, uh, but remember that's only the framework that's rigid and not so much once you place material on here, it may change actually the rigidity of this and it's hard to, it's hard to determine. I've reviewed some of the literature and I don't know if there's a right answer. In any event, we're going to go with the more rigid tray and the idea is you start off with something rigid and the remainder of the impression will hopefully be more rigid than uh, just with the regular dual arch tray. So we're going to create a, a stent with this. So I'm just going to place some, and you don't see any adhesive on here. Probably be a good idea. Be, however, this is just for a stent and it's not just, it is for a stent. So we're just going to place that intra orally onto the, our tooth and then let that set. So now we're creating our stent, and the next step will be uh, preparing the tooth. Okay, so we're gonna continue down the road. Now this image you see is we're gonna discuss uh, quickly just about provisional restorations, interim uh, crowns. And one of the things that happens, so if this is your preparation, this is your finish line, gingival margin. So somewhat like this, if you take a look at it from the side, you can see that there. So relate that to there. So again, I've prepared the tooth, prepared my tooth for uh, the impending restoration. And during the preparation, uh, obviously the amalgam, the old amalgam uh, fractured off, which is fairly, fairly common, replicates reality pretty close. It looks kind of glossy just because there's like a separating medium here. So when I go to fabricate the provisional restoration on the deniform, it doesn't stick to it. So one of the things about creating the provisional restoration uh, that I was a really great tip just to speed things along. If this is your preparation 
finish line and this is your provisional restoration. If you take, you make your putty stent or whatever type of stent, in this case we'll use putty but there's a thousand different ways. Um, what happens is if you just, you fabricate this and you go to, you fabricate this intraorally, let it sit, then you go to use it, you fill it with bisacryl or whatever material you use. You go ahead and fabricate your provisional restoration. What happens is, and I've noticed this often in my own times, is that the when you go to polish or finish the restoration, there's often a lip, and you're kind of like, ah, I over polished it. So what we're trying to do, this little tip here, is to oh, to show you to over bulk your provisional restoration. That way you can finish back to this margin. And one way you can do that is by if you have a set of uh, diagnostic casts you can add wax to the gingival portion of the crown that sort of bulks it out you can see it there and then when you make your putty your stent on here not putty but any type of stent that gives you that extra bulk so when you go to polish that back after you fabricate your provisional restoration uh, you can polish back to the correct uh, position is that is this huge i'm not sure um, aesthetically perhaps especially the anterior this leaving that ledge uh, it definitely can affect the uh, gingival contour, especially if the gingival, if it's going to be a period, of ex extended period of time, the gingival may grow over. You may have issues seeding your crown. Uh, so, in the if you don't have that and you just fabricated a scent, which is common, what you can do, you can see I've already done it here, is just take a really sharp 11 or 25 blade and just sort of remove this gingival portion here. And this is a little more difficult than adding wax to a cat to a diagnostic cast. And this knife isn't, sh this blade isn't as sharp anymore. So we're just gonna remove that. Just like that. Now you can just do it for the single tooth that you're doing. But I've shot three videos. Okay, so there we go. So you can see now that we have a little bit of, there'll be a little more provisional material just around the gingival margin to which I can polish back. So now at this stage, like I said, we've prepared our tooth and now what we're going to do is fabricate our provisional restoration and then we will hollow it out, place a pin or do whatever we need to and then uh, loot down our provisional restoration and then place our foundation restoration. Okay, so I'm gonna try this in first just to make sure I know where it's seating. So it's seating right at the canine. And of course the patient is not occluding on it or biting on it. So let's get going here. Extrude a little bit of that. Just gonna place it right into the bottom here. Try to eliminate as many bubbles as possible and then seed it intraorally. And depending on what type of stent you're using, we have the patient bite down. Now, we, again, like I mentioned before, we're, trying to, we're using a rigid frame for a dual arch impression just to prevent flexing. Probably the, alt, the best would be uh, some sort of vacuum formed uh, matrix uh, that prevents any flexing. Uh, the putty still flexes, or the polyvinyl siloxane in this case still flexes.